Hello. Hey. It's quiet room. <laughs> hey, Alex. Um, Sam Presti last week said they dropped the ball and they let you go the first time. Do you remind him of that frequently? Um, no, I don't remind him of that, but you know, it might have worked out for the best because you know it, it allowed me to move on and grow in ways that maybe I wasn't able to or wouldn't have been able to if I was here. So um, definitely, you know, he brought me back, so I won't I won't give him any stick for that. But uh, you know, I was able to to grow and get to a place where I am now and, and come back, and I'm better than I was when we were here the first time. So I'm excited to see what's next. Alex, you know, you're coming off one of your best seasons of your career, all NBA, and that past two years. Uh, what do you feel like you bring to this team? Obviously, one of the best defensive teams in the league. And now that you know, you add iHeart, and they have all the defenders that they do have over here. So, what do you, where do you feel like you can bring in immediately and, and help impact this team on, on both ends of the floor? Yeah, I think something that comes naturally for me is playing defense. Um, that's how I had to make my name in the league. That's how I had to earn minutes and. Uh, it was always about improvement, and you know, I went from stealing minutes as a two-way to being all defensive team, and that was just about being competitive and, and trying to be a better version of myself. So I think just teaching the guys, you know, whatever I have knowledge-wise um, that I've learned from older players, older coaches, um, and then being vocal, you know, that's something that comes naturally and pretty easily to me is to, is to talk. And I learned from some of the greats, and you know, Bron and, and Rondo, just how to run the game and manage the game without having the ball in your hands. Um, so to be able to pass that along, hopefully that's something that, that they'll receive well, which I'm sure they will, getting to know them for a couple of weeks. They, they all just want to get better and win. So um, I think I think adding that to them would be a big benefit. Alex, you're joining a, a team that was pretty good defensively a year ago. What What's your best guess of just what the defensive signature of this team could be? Yeah, I mean, it, it's going to be as good as we want to make it, you know, um, and, and that's defense in the NBA specifically, but defense in general in basketball, you know, whatever the effort is that you put into it is what you get in return. And um, they put a lot of effort into it last year, and, and that's something that me, myself, I put a lot of effort into that side of the ball. So uh, I, I think it's going to be a good addition, obviously, me and, and Ed Hartenstein. Um, but you got to go out there and you got to earn it. You know, that's that's defense in the NBA. If you don't go out and play your best, anybody's capable of getting 30, 40, teams scoring 130. So um, it's just about showing up and doing it every night. You've been on several teams now. What's, in your experience, what's the most challenging part of integrating into a roster, into an entire new culture? Yeah, I think it's just, just getting over the hump of being new, um, learning the terminology, learning, you know, how they function. Uh, which I, I think I'll do a fine job on. You know, a lot of my career has been about assimilating into new teams and, and new cultures, um, playing with different players, whether it was, you know, G League Elite Camp or a free agent workout to playing in Summer League a couple of times. Like, I've gotten pretty good at getting to know people on a short, short timeline um, and, and making it work, and, and that's something that I think I can do here. Uh, you've been on teams with crazy expectations. Yeah, I'm excited to to be a part of you know a, a group of hungry individuals. You know, I feel like all these guys, um, even with some of them reaching such success at a young age, they're all very hungry and, and really like excited to get back and play basketball again this year. Um, and that's something for me that that I love because that's what I'm about. You know, like every year. I'm, I'm trying to get better. I want more. I want, I want to do more. Um, as far as expectations, it kind of goes back to the question earlier. It's like, it's the NBA. Like, everyone starts 0-0 zero, zero at the beginning of the year, and everyone thinks that they could win a championship or reach the playoffs, whatever it is, you know, that big trophy for that team at the end of the year. Um, but you got to show up and play the games. Like, ball goes up in the air. It's 40 minutes, 82 times. Like, whatever you do, we'll, we'll write the story. So um, I'm excited to add on to whatever they did in the past, but obviously we got to go out and do it again. Like there's no, there's no handouts. Yeah, one more thing for me. I, I think if I remember correctly, you said that Shay was the first one to text you uh, when you got mm -hmm. here. And, uh, I think I heard said something similar. Just yeah. what are your early impressions of you know, the kind of leader that Shay is? Yeah, I mean, incredibly humble guy for how, you know, big of a 
personality he is with the NBA world um, as far as, you know, the skill level and, and the accolades and accomplishments that he's achieved. Uh, he, he's serving leadership. Like, that's, that's hard to come by in the NBA. You know, everyone in the NBA is always, you know, rightfully so, right? It's, it's a doggy dog world. Everyone's trying to get to the next contract. Everyone's trying to get to the next achievement. Um, but, but for him to do that, and then, you know, I think, I think it's not, I don't think it's a front either. Like, I think that's who he truly is, and that's what's been echoed through the organization. Um, it, I'm excited to get to get to know him even better and, and learn from him because, you know, the things I've seen earlier are really positive. Alex, you know, to piggyback kind of off of that, I mean, speaking of Shay, I asked him earlier, you know, what makes you a, you know, a hard defender to, you know, go up against. In reverse to that, you know, what makes Shay, you know, the, the, the dominant player that he is? I mean, obviously, I know a lot of NBA players talk about the bump that he has and mm -hmm. um, getting around and getting to his spots, but, you know, guarding him in the past few years, what, what has made him such a tough guard? And, for him to become one of the best players in the league so far. Yeah, I mean, he doesn't have he doesn't have many like or any deficiencies. Um, he's strong going left, strong going right, counters going left and right. Gets to the free throw line, can shoot threes off the dribble, catch and shoot, like playing transition. There's there's all these boxes that you ask great scores and great players to do, and he he checks all of them. Um, he's one of those guys, you know, when you go into it that night. Get a good night's sleep the night before, and you make sure that you do your scouting report, and you make sure that the team understands like you're going to need help. Like it's not a it's not a one on one. You're not going to just stop him. Um, but I'm glad to be on his team and not have to go against him anymore. You mentioned uh, the, the defensive guys you played on this team. You got Lou Dort, you got Jalen Williams. Even Shea's good at his offense. You don't have to hide him. Mm -hmm. When you won a championship in L.A., they were more veterans. But you had NCP. Yeah, I mean, I I think to be able to do it at a young age in the NBA is so impressive. Um, even name you laid out, Case and Wallace, I mean, dude came in at 19. I think he was 19 or 20 last year, and and he acted like he'd played three or four or five years already. Um, but but some of those names you said, you know, those guys have played decade plus years in the league um, to put that expectation on those guys I think is is a tough comparison but I, I think based on the trajectory and the way that I've seen them work in a three-week span if that's who they truly are um, as competitive as they are I, I think they can achieve you know whatever they whatever they set their minds to because they're extremely talented individuals um, competitive and work hard that's the, those are the three things you need to be an elite defender I feel like in the league and they're off to a great start. Alex, you mentioned um, Case and just earlier touched on him. As an elite defender yourself, it's a you know, game recognizes game. What do you see from Case and specifically on the defensive end? Yeah, he's got great instincts. Um, like I said, come in at such a young age. You know, at his age, I was going into my junior year, sophomore year of college, trying to figure out how I was going to stop guys at Mississippi State and Kentucky. And he was in the NBA Garden, you know, all pro. Uh, it, 10 year veteran so just to start that the, the confidence and in, in the the you know amnesia you have to have to be a good defender in the NBA to kind of forget about the last play and move on to the next is really impressive um, and then like I said his instincts like he's got a knack for finding the ball um, rangy athletic you know he moves side to side really well uh, I think once once he figures out like the game you know like once everybody that's what they say once you figure out the game and your natural talent can meet that that's when you really start playing um, I think he was playing a lot off instinct and a lot off just feel for the game last year and I think once once he gets a couple more years under his belt like, it's gonna be really scary Alex speaking of college I think the last time you were here it was a part of Thunder Media that was right after you finished at A&M mm -hmm. and most people knew you for that A&M game in this building yeah, uh -huh. I know you played a lot of big game since then but rewind up to that game for a second what do you remember of that that time and that game for Yeah, well, for anybody who doesn't know, the the second round game against Northern Iowa, right, down 12 with 44 seconds <laughs> and went in double overtime. Uh, yeah, I just remember being really desperate because that was a senior, and if we lose that, my season's over. And, you know, growing up, College Station, ball boy for the team, like AM was my dream. Like, that was, at one point in time, that was my NBA. Like, that was all I could think about was playing for them. So, 
um, I was really desperate to just try and make plays and then you know fortunately we, we got a couple good bounces and, and, and got some plays down late but uh, yeah that's 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 still one of the questions that gets brought up very very frequently when I see random people you know either a &M fans or people that just remember basketball does that still rank as one of your for sure, yeah, no, for sure. That's 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 up there for sure. You talk about you talk about Thunder fans. What can they expect from you on the court? And also, does it feel weird to be the oldest guy in the team? Um, yes, to the second one. Um, Jay Will has done a great job of calling me old guy already or old man, and I like to remind him I'm only thirty. Like I'm not. Like I'm going on year eight in the league. I'm thirty. Like I'm not far from, you know when I started and I'm very far from being done. Um, it, sorry, re repeat the first part of the question. I got What's distracted. Sorry, thinking of Jay Will. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't, I'm not going to change my game. I'm not going to change anything that, that got me to this point. Um, I'm going to try and be a great addition to the team, play great defense, play smart offense. Um, obviously, uh, I kind of wear my heart on my sleeve and, and go for it every night. That's kind of just what I have to do to, to be impactful in the league and, and that's something that I continue or I will continue to do. Play to win, play for the team, like those are the things that, that I've held true to myself throughout my whole career, whether I've been in the G League, on two way, on a championship team. Um, those things work for me and, and they usually work for the team. So hopefully I can just stay with that and, and provide, you know, positive additions to the team. This organization's always been a pretty transparent one. Players. What have those conversations with Sam and Mark and whoever else kind of looked like? Yeah, a lot of what I just said, like they, they brought me here to um, do what I do best, you know, which is help the team, um, play good defense, you know, be a pro, you know, sacrifice for the team. Those are things that, that they recognized when I was here the first time, um, which is, you know, why you hear Sam talk about, you know, being regretful that they let me go. And I think coming back, that's that's the same things that they want from me. Um, you know, I know how to play basketball. I've played around some of the best coaches and, and players that, that have played this game, the smartest guys. Like it's it's not a science that I don't have figured out. Um, it's just about figuring out how I can be best beneficial to the team and, and, and how I can work with those guys that have already been here. Uh, go ahead, Joel. That's fine. I was talking to the last time we saw you, the trade that just happened. Uh, so those are your early conversations with Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I start I start smiling and laughing thinking about it because we have such a good relationship. Um, we've still like over the years we've grabbed dinner together. You know when I've been on the, he's on the road visiting me or I'm I'm here visiting him. <clears throat> he's still pretty much the same. You know he's grown as a basketball mind obviously to to get to the level and, and coach the team to the success that they've reached. He's grown in that aspect, but um, you know no ego, no pride. He's willing to say I'm wrong or something's better and go with it. And I feel like that's that's a big reason and a very impactful reason that, you know, he's had success but also the team's had success is he's willing to strip himself of any achievement or, you know, anything that somebody else might deem as positive and just put the team first and put the organization first. And uh, I really respect that about him because he's, he's always been like that, even if he was with – the blue and, and myself, you know, he's always about helping the players and helping the team um, and, and really just happy to be back with him and, and get to grow some more. It's been mentioned today that, you know, you're the oldest guy in the team, you've got a title, but you have this wealth of experience coming into this team. Mm -hmm. That's a young team, but also has some guys who have been established and kind of set a culture here. What's the leadership balance for you with bringing that experience and learning to share it, but also not wanting to insert yourself in a place where you haven't already been yet? Yeah, no, there's no um, there's no agenda for me to come in and, and, you know, try to have this oldest guy on the team, veteran status. Like, um, I'm, like I said, I'm, I've, I've always been and always will be a team first guy. Like, that's just ingrained in me. Like, I can't change that about myself even if I wanted to. Um, so, for me, it's just about providing resources to the guys that need them. Um, be, you know, Roller coasters of the year. Uh, you go through winning streaks, you lose a couple games, maybe you shouldn't. Um, just trying to keep guys level headed. And, you know, if anybody needs me for anything, they can always ask me. But, you know, I, I don't come in and try and be, you know, the boss or, or do anything crazy. It's just about.
playing basketball and getting to know my teammates. So the last question to Barry. Anything. anything. You might not get it, but, but you can ask. <laughs> Barry Trimble to Tulsa World. What do you remember about those days with the Blue? Besides the relationship with Mark, what, just what, what was that experience like? Yeah, it was a good learning experience for me just figuring out what professional basketball was. Um, you know, in college, I was uh, impromptu point guard, and, and every time in college, you know, I would look over the sideline, get a play, dribble it up, call whatever it was, get people set up, and, and once you get to the, the professional game, at least over on, you know, th this part of the world, it's play fast. If you have an advantage, take it. Um, it was a lot more like organized open gym, um, so I had to figure out I had to figure out how to play the game and then also had to figure out like how could I have an impact in the game because I knew if I had impact in the game it creates value and if I have value someone's going to want me on their team. Um, so at that point it was just about trying to improve um, and, and get better and then figure it out and I think you know playing a whole year in the G League and then doing free agent workouts playing on a, on a summer league team again like it was all just great learning experiences for me. Um, and then obviously to the next level and the next level, like I just kept learning and getting better and using it. And, and that's something I'm going to continue to do, you know, now that I'm here. Thanks.